Dorothy Jones from HealthScope. Um, and one of the most entertaining biographies on the app. <laughs> Kathy is the National Quality Manager for HealthScope and on the senior leadership team. She has 25 years experience in public and private hospitals with qualifications in speech pathology and an MBA. Kathy represents the private sector on several national committees for the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare, lectures internationally in quality and risk management, and hosts the popular No Harm Do Done podcast. Her areas of interest are person-centred care, measurement of performance indicators, and public reporting. To relax, she likes nothing better than sitting in front of all five days of a test cricket match. This last happened in 1996. <laughs> Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Um, I don't have my presentation up on the screen just yet, so I will pad for time. Luckily, I don't mind padding for time. Um, what I'm going to do today is show you a really cool live interactive hack portal that, that helps our clinicians look at hospital-acquired complications in kind of real time. And I will demonstrate that, but that's not the only thing I want to challenge you with today. Not everyone was in the room yesterday, but I did talk a little bit about um, how to get people aligned on why hacks are important. And they're not important just for funding, as we know. So activity-based funding. I'm a little bit sick of all the acronyms that have been talked about because I'm a quality person. I'm not a funding person, really. And I am a clinician uh, from a long time ago. What I'm interested in is how many nurses are in the room? It's actually not that many nurses. Okay, how many doctors? I think doctors outnumber nurses just slightly. Um, so, so what I want to really talk about is communication because we're really good at communicating uh, funding models to each other and all sorts of economic kind of models that uh, we understand and the statistics of all of that. But when you're trying to communicate to the nurse unit manager on the surgical ward, you need to use a slightly different method of communication. So I'm going to show you today um, what HealthScope is doing with hacks and uh, how we're using the IPA risk adjustment model, not for funding because we're, we're not really funded that way, um, but we're using it to measure quality and uh, that is hospital acquired complications and as I said, the dashboard, the clinicians think it's quite cool. And also um, introducing safety and quality into pricing frameworks is fantastic. Uh, and I really support it, specifically hacks, but it has to align with your purpose as well. It's not enough on its own. Your organisation has to think it's important. Um, so as well as looking at my organisation today, I also want you to think about your own. So as I'm going through, I want you to reflect on your own organisation and how you might be able to communicate that a little bit better. So HealthScope, what are we? We are a private hospital organisation. There's a lot of stigma and uh, anecdotal assumptions about private healthcare in the room. Just park those, please. Uh, private, I've worked in the public sector as well, and uh, both systems are fabulous and essential. And uh, we have 44 private hospitals, every state and territory around Australia. So I'm dealing with multiple jurisdictions, and uh, every time you change the hack definition, we curse you. Well, us people, <laughs> please don't change the definitions at the state level. Uh, and, and health funds do this as well. So we're dealing with multiple definitions of hack. And in fact, uh, Medibank quite famously in 2015 had a bit of a dispute with Calvary over funding for complications. And that was a little bit of a start in the, that was a bit of a splash in the media and the rest of us in the private sector have also endured and enjoyed various uh, value-based and activity-based uh, and quality-based discussions as part of funding with our health funds. So I mentioned yesterday, we've been doing this for a long time, at least a decade in the private healthcare sector in Australia as well. So HealthScope were early adopters. We jumped on board early with hacks. We started measuring them in July 2017. And we adopted hacks as one of two core measures. The measures were, um, uh, the first measure was the hospital acquired complication measure. And the second measure was a patient experience measure. Uh, so we're going to reflect about why and how we're communicating hacks as well. So think about that as I'm going through, please. Has anyone seen this meme? <laughs> this is called Distracted Boyfriend. <laughs> I, <laughs> it is everywhere on the internet. If you haven't seen this, you're obviously not on the internet as much as I am. I feel like this is what's happening in this conference. Um, and <laughs> 
You can see the poor old activity-based funding there, the old girlfriend and uh, hacks are just wonderful and bright and wearing a really great red dress. Um, if you haven't seen Distracted Boyfriend, go on the internet and have a look. There's some better examples than this, I guarantee it. It is a, it is a great meme. Uh, <laughs> All right, so on with uh, some more information about HealthScope. As I said, we have 44 hospitals and uh, we adopted HACS as one of our core KPIs in July 2017. It isn't enough uh, to measure just one indicator. In the quality sector, we measure hundreds and that's part of the problem. It's, it's too complicated. It's a bit like getting the coding manual out. You know, No one can really get their handle on what it means to have all these indicators. Our board knows that the, the hack rate is our main indicator of quality clinical outcomes, along with a bunch of others. Uh, and also, as person-centred care or patient experience, we also measure um, the overall rating of treatment of care using the new RPEX uh, tool, the Australian Hospital Patient Experience Question Set. Both of these wonderful uh, uh, pieces of information come from the Australian Commission for Safety and Quality in Healthcare. And as HealthScope is a national body, we do try and adopt the national, um, the direction that the national body is going in. And uh, the RPEX is a fantastic patient experience tool and uh, is available for everyone to use. So we adopted these two new measures, actually. They were brand new and no one else in the industry was really using it. This was a shadow year for the public hospitals. And we started collecting hacks as a pure rate, basically, just a, uh, as a proportion of separations. For all of our 44 hospitals, including a kind of a, a definition for our mental health hospitals as well. Now, I'm showing you trees. Uh, in addition to taking Panadol, uh, trees uh, are lacking in this room, I think you'll agree, and we haven't been looking outside uh, the window very often. And trees reduce stress and improve concentration and they boost your immune function. So every so often I'm going to be putting a tree up on the screen for you and you can thank me later if you find you're immune to the flu that's going around the room. Um, HealthScope, as I said, is an early adopter and I did mention health funds have been uh, penalising private health organisations for complications for a number of years. Um, hacks are used for quality though in our organisation and not funding. And Telescope's been an early adopter of public reporting as well. We're not yet reporting our hacks publicly, but we are reporting our patient experience data and we're one of the first to do so as well. Now, you obviously don't need funding to motivate clinicians to worry about hacks. They already worry about complications without the need for funding incentives. Um, but you do need clinician um, alignment and you need your clinici clinicians to understand if your focus on quality is actually something that's coming from the board and the executive and it's an earnest and honest opinion of your organisation or whether it's just something that's coming out of the government's making us do it. So again, moving on from that, why does staff care about hospital acquired complications? Um, did it work? Yes, if staff care about hospital acquired complications, our, our rate at HealthScope has gone down and also our overall rating of treatment and care has gone up. Simplification is one way of nudging people to move in the right direction. Um, we should be thinking of more ways of nudging people and uh, there's some wonderful research on nudging uh, coming out of uh, um, economy literature as well. We have a board report that uh, is very similar to everyone else's uh, board report, I'm sure. Uh, it shows a trend over time of, of hacks uh, nationally and also hospital by hospital by peer group. Um, and this board report uh, is, in some ways, uh, it's more important that the staff know that it's going to the board and the board are asking questions than, uh, than any, anything else. It's, it's making, again, it's another nudge to staff to focus on hospital-acquired complications. But everyone talks about it. So in our organisation, everyone is talking about this and they're talking about it from the point of view of trying to reduce harm and preventable harm to patients. Um, they're not talking about this, though. So this is, these are things that um, I think sometimes we, <laughs> we think um, may be going through people's heads. Uh, Luckily, I wash my hands. Each infection cost my hospital $9,000. No, it doesn't matter that he got the pressure injury, he's in the highest risk group, so we only lost 2,000. No, they're not saying that at all. That's not the reason they're focusing on hacks. And I like this one, I'm so pleased we had no falls on our ward, it means my CEO gets his bonus. <laughs> no one is saying that, no one at all. So the clinicians are not, uh, not doing these things. We expect our staff to care about the dollars 
And, and they actually don't. <laughs> they really, really don't. Managers kind of care about it sometimes, but if you want your staff to care about what you're talking about, you have to find a way to motivate them that is a bit different to just we're going to lose money. Just a bit more on communication, um, making sure that not only we're aligning uh, with our purpose, but actually that our purpose is driven by our staff and driven by what our patients want. And actually hospital acquired complications is, is right up there. So it, it's really starting to come close to aligning with what our staff and patients think is important and now we're talking about it a lot more. Again, start with why. Why are we doing this? Uh, in the red on the left, obviously this is not, not the reason. We need to focus on hacks because otherwise we'll lose funding. These are all statements that I have heard. Uh, out there in the world. We don't. We focus on hacks because we don't want our patients to be harmed. Communicate purpose. So uh, if you had better documentation, we wouldn't miss out on so much funding. Again, these are statements that I have heard. I'm sure you've all heard this before. Um, a, a slightly different reason. If we know which conditions are present on admission, we can really weed out what's preventable. And tell a story. So. Hacks allow us to tell a story, and this is why hacks have been uh, in that distracted boyfriend meme so much the topic of conversation, because it's new and it's exciting, but also it tells a story that numbers don't always tell us. Uh, so you'll agree that uh, the right-hand side is a, is a better way of communicating. Think about how this applies to what you're doing, because I know some of you are at jurisdiction level and some of you are at hospital level. Okay, so that's a wonderful opportunity. What are the opportunities of hacks? Um, it's kind of the missing link between funding and the patient. So it's not just a little add-on, a little nice to have, everyone else in the world was doing it, we decided we'd do it. Maybe this is the missing link. Maybe this is something that's gonna help us get our complication rate down below that 10% kind of level that we can't penetrate. Maybe real-time data is really gonna help us push that rate down maybe just being able to talk. And we're again, looking at research of how do you get people being more creative, particularly at work, you've got to bring people together from different environments. And funding environment, clinical environment, starting to talk about the same thing, and HACS provides a bit of a language for us to do that. And again, a, a nice Venn diagram. So maybe, just maybe, uh, real-time data and dashboards and analytics and the sort of thing you've been talking about at the conference can really help with that. So let's hope. Now back to the story about um, HealthScope. And the story continues. Uh, our board said, this is great, we've reduced our hack rate in the first year, where's the risk adjustment? And unfortunately, uh, the IPA model for risk adjustment was really designed for hospital public funding. It wasn't that easy for us to just pick up and adopt as a quality risk adjustment model. The, all the risk adjustment methodology was there, but how do we translate that to something our clinicians would understand? And so we decided, and I don't expect you to read this, I'm just showing you this slide actually to say, no one should ever put that much writing on a slide. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have two, uh, two methods of hack risk adjustment, just because uh, there were two wonderful possibilities out there. And I'm gonna briefly talk about one and then show you the second one. So the first uh, method, uh, and I'm just gonna quickly flick off from this one and show you some more trees because this will boost your immune system. Um, the first method uh, is a bit like HSMR, but for hacks. So what happens is uh, a wonderful company called Health Policy Analysis, you've heard from them, and they're just down the front here, Jim and Denisa. Uh, they have helped us to uh, use funnel plots to determine what's our expected hack rate in this hospital or for this particular hack, infection for example, and have we got a higher or lower rate than expected? So just like HSMR, you can display this in funnel plots and it just actually gives you a really nice picture of is your hack rate uh, there? It's not just the three risk adjusted severity levels and funding differences for those, but we're looking at are you higher or lower than expected? And uh, the second method is uh, we developed with Pavilion Health and Paul is somewhere hands up there over there. If you've got tricky questions about the methodology, I would refer you to these guys. Um, so uh, I like looking at the display and the simple method of uh, explaining it as well. But uh, basically this is the, the beauty of this system, the portal that I'm about to show you is that it's actually real time coding data. So if someone's coded a record, uh, this goes into our database and the hack data is showing straight away. 
So it, not just for querying errors, but actually to show the clinicians, are you trending up? Is your hack, are your hack rates getting worse and which one is it? And can you go in and grab that record right now and find out if there's something going on right now on your ward? So that's a possibility. Um, it also enables drilling down to patient level data as well. And the ability to see trend over time, which I think is almost as important as benchmarking with peer groups um, as well. You, you, risk adjustment often is, is really nice because you're comparing yourself to your own performance last year when it was perhaps worse. So that is also, that uh, portal is allowing us to see our performance compared to peer hospitals, and there are 400 hospitals and uh, 9 million episodes, something like that, I think. Yep, Paul's nodding. Uh, in this database, and we're comparing ourselves to public and private hospitals that are the same, that have the same level of severity and the same risk. Okay, so this is method one. This is the funnel plot I was talking about. I'm just quickly flicking it up because it's not the topic of conversation today. We're still working on it, and it is a really exciting method as well. But method two, and again, this uh, slide is just here for your future reference when you download the slides later. I'm not going to talk to every single point. But we calculate the complexity and the score for each hack and in each episode of care. So you're looking at the, the 44 hospitals and getting down to the patient level, identifying closest peers with a similar complexity and risk to that particular hospital from those 400 hospitals. It could be 30 that have a similar level of risk comparing to those hospitals and finding out where you lie on that right-hand uh, little uh, diagram there. Are you in the orange? Are you worst practice on this quintile band or are you in the best practice band? And this is specifically designed for clinicians to look at in a hurry because we have a lot of complicated databases. Uh, Risk man might be one of them, uh, where the reporting is so complicated that you almost need a degree in risk man <laughs> to be able to get anything out of it. So we were trying to design something that was a little simpler for people to look at. So uh, no apology at all for how simple this is. Now there's two examples here. One is a 27-year-old female patient booked for day surgery. The other one, an 87-year-old female who was admitted to hospital um, with lots of comorbidities, just as an example of how the severity and the risk gets taken into account. And I'm not going to take you through all that. Again, that's for you to look at later. And we've had a lot of previous discussions as well on how to look at complexity and hack. It's basically the IPA model translated into these wonderful databases. OK, a moment to pause and look at the trees and check the time. And we're doing well for time. So. Uh, moving on to a demonstration, and I'll just give you a little bit of an idea of what this database looks like. Um, many years ago, and I might be going back hmm, 25 years maybe, when I was a speech pathologist, I was asked to do a presentation to a room at least with at least as many people. And it was, um, oh, we've got this wonderful new bit of technology that enables people who are non-verbal to talk to you over the phone. Do you want to do that live on stage? And that was the worst possible presentation I ever had to endure, hooking up to this poor nonverbal woman who was up on the screen as well, a picture of her up on the screen, trying to talk to her by the phone live on the stage with a technology 25 years ago that was not that great. However, I'm still not brave enough to hook up to the, uh, the hack portal live. <laughs> and well, I'm getting a thumbs up at that. But I am going to show you the screenshots and uh, you'll have to trust me on the drill down. But this is a, this is a classic uh, portal as well. So when you open it up, and this is called RISC, which is, uh, uh, no, no, I'm not going to remember the acronym, Relative uh, Indicators. Indicators of Safety and Quality. Okay. You can see on the right-hand side, it is giving us a bit of an idea about whether you're best practice or worst practice. And there's some of my hospitals there. I'm showing you the ones that have zero hacks for the month because I'm sure they wouldn't appreciate being put up on the screen with, uh, with a big orange flag. <laughs> However, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is real data for May. So what you're seeing there is that those particular hospitals haven't had a hack. So they're actually in best practice. And that's all very well for that particular hospital. But when you click on that hospital, it will take you down to the next layer. And when you go to the next layer, you're looking at 16 hacks and whether or not any of those ones are in that band of green or red or orange or equal to peers. And that gives our staff the ability to investigate their problems. And I know you have a similar thing in the public sector, so this is just a, uh, a version of what you have, I'm sure. But this is also, as I said, live data, um, linking to coding as well. 
There's not that many different reports that you can get out of it. As I said, we're uh, deliberately keeping it fairly simple, but you can group it in different ways by hack and so on. And there is also a trend over time. So this is a snapshot, and I'm going to go in and show you a little bit more data um, as we go through. We still have plenty of time, so this is good. So this is where we start to get perhaps some that aren't best practice. So we've got some better than peer ratings here. And on the left-hand side, you'll, you'll see that the heading says hacks all. Where it says hacks all, that's the full 16, or the ones that we can collect out of that 16. The hack subset is just a health scope thing. We, we decided we would pull out some of the indicators that are more um, able to be influenced by nursing staff because they wanted to, to really see the falls and the infections sort of separately. And I know it's multidisciplinary and that's not perfect, but um, that was just an internal um, mechanism there. But looking at hacks all, you can see that there are some uh, areas where we're in best practice, some areas where the hospital is better than peers, and there are some numbers in red. Now, where the number is in red, it means that the hospital is missing its target. And you might say, where did we get the targets from? Targets originally were historical targets based on last year's performance, because that's what we had to go on. The target in the future is actually based on being at best practice against your peers. Now, when we did this, uh, some of the targets got easier. <laughs> so we had to actually say, you know, we, I'd like you to be better than your peers, except where your peers are really crap. In that case, I just want you to beat last year's rate, um, which is not really fair, but I also don't want them to go backwards. I, I want people to be continuing to improve, and maybe they are the best in their particular level of severity and particular hack rate. What happens, though, is that no one is the best in everything. And the ability to find which hack is your problem area is, is gold. It's, it's really useful. Because what was happening in that first year is that all of our hospitals would go in and they'd look at their hacks. This is when we had an old system before this wonderful uh, risk-adjusted system. And they'd go in and they'd say, oh, we've got a lot of infections. It's like, yes, everyone has a lot of infections. That's the most common hack. So it doesn't mean that infections is your biggest problem. It just means that that is the most common number that's coming up. They may not be preventable. None of them may be preventable. In fact, you may still be at best practice with those 30 infections. However, VTEs over here, you've got five and you should have zero. So that is your problem area. So finding what to focus on, and we had a lot of hospitals going, I'm focusing a lot on infections, I'm really focusing on infections, but they're not preventable. These ones I've gone in and looked at the medical record and I can't prevent them. And so this system allows us to look at what is preventable. And that's where it's really engaging the clinicians here too. Okay, so you're showing up in green, showing up in colours against your peers. You're showing up in red against your own historical performance. Here's a couple more indicators. You can see we don't have fabulous rates for everything. There are always some that are going to be in the orange. There is always something we can focus on. And we know that this time it is risk adjusted. This allows us to go to the various people who are very interested in risk adjustment, which is all of the clinicians, and, and talk about this. Um, here's some more uh, of my hospitals. I've picked out a couple of them. And you can see on the right hand side, there's this little uh, trend line. And trend over time is a really wonderful feature of this portal as well. So you can see there at the top Hobart Private Hospital, it might have started with a high hack rate. That goes back to July 17, I think, is the time period there. This is uh, quarterly data. And it's showing how they've managed to decrease that over time. And when you click on that tiny little chart, um, you can find, and of course Hobart Private doesn't really care about the other hospitals, but it is all visible. Everyone can see everyone else's data. Um, you click on that little chart and it will take you to a much bigger graph and the graphs are beautiful, really beautifully designed. So here's the, um, the hack uh, portal. This is uh, a, a particular private hospital now and you can see there that that's their trend over time from quarter one 2018 uh, through to quarter four 2019, uh, FY. So coming through, all of those dots are in the best practice band. So it means that they are coming down trending down, but they're still remaining in best practice the whole way along. In fact, they were in best practice when they started, so they're still motivated to decrease their hack rate. Here's one that isn't in best practice all the time, and so you can see what happens to the chart when, uh, when the hospital is in worst practice or equal to peers, and the grey bar is the, is the target line there for that particular hospital. Very, very simple charts. 
Um, a lot more sophistication is possible. Like I said, this is early days. This is our first year of, of using these risk adjustment tools and uh, the explanation of the risk adjustment takes so long that we really don't want to be explaining how to, use the, <laughs> how to use more complex features of the portal. And if you want to, you then just click the, uh, the, the various uh, hacks in this portal. When you're clicking on a number, you're going into patient level detail. So what we're finding is exactly what's happening with that particular patient that makes up those two VTEs or those two, in this case, two infections, one a bloodstream infection, one a pneumonia. So you can find that data straight away. So again, all good features of uh, you know, data that can be interrogated is to go down to that patient level. Now this slide, um, Amanda Walker put up something very similar on day one. Um, so the data's not perfect. Of course the data's not perfect. Are we decreasing our hack rate because people just aren't coding these things anymore? Maybe. I don't think so. Uh, coders don't do that. They don't do that. Um, but the data is improving. And it's really important to think about is the improvement mainly that data? And, and I'm talking about the Muhammad Pyramid here. With any investigation of any number, and you're finding maybe uh, errors and problems with the data, it's always the numbers. You've got to clean out those data problems before you can start to focus on going up the pyramid and finding the real issues. And we need to clean out that data. Finding the problems with the data that are just coding related or the condition onset flags wrong, um, and we've found millions of those, as all of you are with hacks, finding those problems with data is very, very valuable. It, it really means that we can focus on what the real problems are. And uh, I think that's uh, worthy of uh, discussion as well. OK, I could go into great detail, but I won't because it's probably time to stop for questions. And uh, I'll hand back to the... Ah. So thank you. Thanks, Cathy, for that crash course in keeping cool under pressure. <laughs> um, I will open up for um, a couple of questions before we break for morning tea. Just over here. Thanks very much for all the pictures of trees. Love them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering if you're seeing the uh, focus on hacks actually translating to a, a quality improvement mindset that's looking for other areas to improve care, either sort of consciously or unconsciously? Yeah, that's, um, that's a good question. I mean, I think uh, in our company, we had a pretty good quality improvement mindset already. But it's certainly sharpened by the need for you know, a hospital CEO to be hauled in front of the board to talk about their hacks, for example. So I think that um, it means that if the leadership is talking about it, it, it actually trickles down and it gets people more focused on quality improvement in general. And that's, it's, you can't, I know it's tedious and people always mention how important the leadership is on this, but it is absolutely true. It makes the massive difference. Um, at the, at the coalface, you know, clinicians are just wanting to know what do you want me to focus on? There's so many things. <laughs> what do you want me to focus on? And now I can go, yes, you can focus on this particular problem, please. Um, it does help, yeah. All right, we've got one question from the app. Um, so, um, which one am I going to choose? <laughs> so easy, choose the easy one. <laughs> um, <laughs> So how often do administrators discuss um, the improvements based on you know, poor hack performance um, and how is it communicated with yeah. the health scope? Okay, that's a good question. Quality data, typically we've done a lot of six monthly reporting, sometimes annual reporting with time lags. And uh, part of the improvement that we've been able to see has been uh, shifting to a very strong monthly reporting. Like Just like the budget, we report everything monthly, which is really challenging to get the action plans you know, turning over that quickly. Sometimes the action plans don't change, but it's, it's monthly reporting. And so we do report the action plans monthly as well. Maybe not for every, everyone who's an outlier, but for, for the majority, um, we would be reporting action plans as well as data. All right, well, thanks again, Cathy. It's really great to see um, the IPA work being translated into a different context. Mm. Um, and yeah, really great presentation. So please join me in thanking Cathy.